So I'm here with Jeff Fear, who's Hyundai's chief tech for end performance in Australia. Have I got that right, Jeff? Well, actually, it's now in Australia. Oh, uh, in Australia. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. apart from that, yeah, we had a slight name change here. End performance is our performance products. Um, so the brakes and the coilovers, or all the, the springs and different things like that. Um, and in Australia is now controlling all this sort of event. Okay, cool. So let's talk a bit about what makes an end car different from a standard car. And they're all front wheel drive, and that means we've got to deal with something called torque steer. So Jeff, what is torque steer, and how have Hyundai managed to combat it in their front drive powerful cars? So torque steer, what that is, is actually, you've got two drive shafts coming out from the gearbox to the wheels. And as you accelerate hard, the drive will actually try and turn the wheels. You've got drive shafts that can flex, and if one flex is different to the other, they'll actually turn wheels and steer you down the road. Okay, and that so, feels really awful for the drive. You're driving along, you can actually see the steering wheel turn like that, even if your hands are off it. But on these cars, you can accelerate, and the steering wheel just kind of stays absolutely straight. So how have Hyundai achieved that, Jeff? So on these, we've got really good drive shafts. They're, they're designed not to be flexing, not to brake, that sort of thing. They're so they're very really stiff. super strong, but they're strong enough to stop from braking, but flexible enough to flex equally to each other. So on this side of the car, the passenger side for Australia, you've got the gearbox here and a short shaft. The other side, it's got to get from here all the way over. So what they do is they run a jack shaft to the engine and then another short shaft. The exact same length and, and flexibility as this one. Okay. So they'll flex it identical. So if they flex the same, you don't get any steering effect. It's normally a long one will flex and turn the car. So it's a, it's just put your arm out, it's a bit like a Chinese burn, isn't it? A bit, yep. a bit like, like, like that. I'm not going to give him a Chinese burn, he's going to punch me. It's been a few um, years, but I can take it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> now, is the, does the standard i30 have that drive shaft um, set up? It doesn't have the same strength or the durable type shaft because it doesn't make the horsepower. So it, it's still equal lengths, they do it for all their cars. Um, but they just don't make them as rigid to take as much grunt as this does. Okay. So. All right, so that's torques there done. Now, there's also a bit of chassis strengthening and stiffening going on compared to a normal i30N. Why is that important for a track car? For a track car, if the body's flexing, it's giving away its ability to have response. And response is you turn the wheel, the car does what you asked. And if the body flexes, you turn, the body flexes, then it catches, then it turns. You want it to do what you asked it to do instantaneous. So by tightening up the body, you get better response out of it. So it makes the car pointier, sharper feel, and much more responsive, much sportier feel. Okay. And so what have Hyundai done to actually stiffen that chassis up compared to a standard i30N? So the body itself is all spot welded together. They've got... I can't remember the percentage, I think it's somewhere around 30% more spot welds. So if they've got two overlapping metals and they spot weld all along, they're adding more to stop it from flexing in the welds. Yeah. Then on the body, on the strut towers, they have uh, a plate up top above the strut and body brace to that. Under the floor, they've got for the triangulating the lower control arm mount points across member mounts and they triangulate it to the body. Okay. In the tunnel, there's an extra body strapping in there at the rear end as well. So they're, they're adding all these plates and, and strengthening up that way. Okay, now track car engines have to do a lot of hard work. Mm. So what changes have been made to basically ensure that the engine's gonna withstand lap after that? Because today we've been out there and you know I've spent the entire day, apart from quick breaks for coffee and toilet, just lapping these cars. When I haven't been driving one of them, someone else has been driving it. Mm. And you know that, that's a big ask. So what's been done to the engine to ensure it can withstand that sort of load? Yep, so one is all the clearances. So they make a real tight clearance engine to design to make the power. Then you have to keep control of the oil, so temperature and flow of the oil. Yep. So the oil pump system, and in the, the bottom of it, it's, it's got to pick up and sucking the oil up. Normally the oil will surge around as you're splashing around. Yep. So there's a baffle system in there to keep the oil in place so you don't lose it. If you suck air, you get cavitate, you hurt an engine. So yep. they've got a good baffle system. Okay, in there. so is the baffle system in the standard cars? Every, non -non every car. production car has a baffle of some flavour, yep. um, but they don't have to do the, the work that these do. Because these have the grip, the oil 
will surge more. So we've got a different system in this to a production car because the production car doesn't actually need it. Yeah, okay. Now one thing I do like about these cars is that there's different modes of electronic stability control and basically that's a system, I always use my phone for this, um, when you're going around a corner you want the car to track basically where you want it to go and not to um, understeer off the road or oversteer off the road like that. Now that's really good for on-road driving but um, for track driving sometimes you actually want to have what we term slip just to rotate the car around. So there's a few different modes. You can have fully on, which takes care of a, a lot of um, your on-road driving. A sport mode allows a little bit of slip, but I also like the fact you can completely turn it off, can't you, Jeff? Yeah, that's right. So there's not many cars that allow you to turn it off, and yeah. actually when you turn this off, it actually adds another function that we can do, which I don't know of any other cars that do it, that gives brake override as well. What's brake override? Brake override is if you push a car into corner and you get a bit of understeer, say, you, you're on throttle, yeah. you may want to just touch the brake. All production cars have ADR where if you're on the accelerator and you touch the brake, it turns off the accelerator. And that's so yeah, you yeah. don't accidentally hit them both at once. Yeah, you know what, I've actually noticed that because um, when I drive an automatic on track, I actually left foot brake it. And sometimes um, I don't I have a bit of overlap between throttle and brake. Yep. And a lot of cars out there will instantly cut the throttle, yep. which is awful. Now, it's really hard to get it exactly right when you left foot braking. Yep. And in fact, sometimes when you're left foot braking, you actually want to have your foot on the throttle and then just dab the brake just to balance it and then, you know, actually have both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So to have that override is actually really good. Now, this is what I mean by the difference between a sports car and a motorsports car. A sports car sort of goes very fast in a straight line and maybe do one lap. But a motorsports car, you can really get into it. You can play with the throttle and the brake and rotate the car into a corner because of features like that. That's it. That's yeah. it. So it's designed to bring it to track days. It's not a performance car that if you want to go to a track, you need to change a lot of things to make it trackable. This is, yeah, buy the car, run it in, yeah. take it to a track. And there's something else which I really like um, as well. I'm going to bring my phone out here. Here's the phone, right? See that? And then... Dana, right? That is something I don't think I've ever seen on a car um, of this nature, which is an air duct. And um, the steering wheel isn't there, but um, basically, um, when a car is driving fast on track, let's say 200 k's an hour or 150 k's into, into a corner, it's got a lot of energy. We can give you the equation for that. Then you've got to get rid of that energy because you're going to slow down. And that energy is converted into heat. And you've got to get rid of that heat. And this air duct, well, how does that work, Jeff? So what its main purpose is to cool the brakes off, believe it or not. So the air coming through here comes out, if the wheel was straight, down the outside of the, the wheel. And what it does is it creates turbulence. And when you've got turbulence, on the other side of it, you've got vacuum. So by pushing cold air down the outside, it sucks hot air out of the brakes. So the cold air coming from inside goes through the brakes. Yep, and it's the Bernoulli effect it where it goes wide and it comes narrow. Yep. And whenever you have air going from wide to narrow, it speeds up. And in that speeds up round here, creates an area of low pressure and sucks that heat away, which is mm. fantastic because the front brakes absolutely take a bit of a, a, a beating, particularly in front drive cars which are nose heavy. So that's great. Now also, um, the brake pads on here. Mm. Um, they didn't um, really start to, to fade, so that they're a special compound as well? Yep, so again, they're designed to be able to take to a track. One of the briefs when they were designing the car from um, Albert Beerman was, I need the car to be able to do a track day, I need it to drive there, do three laps and I can drive it home. And remember, my, my track is the Nürburgring. <laughs> so yeah. they had to have a pad that was durable enough to do three laps of the ring, yeah. and they returned. So they've made a high temp, high grip pad that still isn't too noisy for the street and still works cold. So yeah, because every um, there's always a compromise, right? So if you've got your track street pad, that will withstand high temperatures, which is what we want, because we're putting a lot of energy into those brakes, but it will be more expensive. You might have to replace it as long. It might possibly be a bit noisier, a bit more um, brake wear, but you know, um, it's great that Hyundai have, have put good brakes on this. Now, the other thing is, if we take a look at these tyres, this car's done a lot of work today, and the tyres are not actually destroyed. They're, 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 they're literally still hot. I can feel a lot of heat coming off them here. So talk to us about what these tyres are, Jeff. So on this Sakona, we run the uh, Pirelli. So the Pirelli Pilot Sport, uh, no Pilot Sport, that's a Michelin, which is the Pilot Sport's on the, the sedan, we're on this. Yeah. So it's a, a P0 HN compound. Yeah. Um, the design, the compound's designed for this car 
for this weight, for this use. Yep. So um, it's designed to take the beating that we're going to give it to it. So um, yeah, the fantastic tyre, okay, really good. durable. They're not the stickiest of all tyres. Um, you can always find a stickier tyre, but they're the most durable street and track versatile tyre. They're okay, fantastic. Good. Now, Alder and cars are front wheel drive. Now, apart from torque steer, that's another challenge as well, because when you accelerate, you get a weight shift to the back. When you get a weight shift to the back, you get a weight shift off the front, and the less weight on a tire, the less grip on a tire. Also, when you're cornering, then you get a weight shift to the outside of wheel, um, and less weight on the inside wheel, so your inside wheel tends to want to spin up. And that's a common problem with front wheel drive cars. You come out of a corner, you put your foot down, the inside wheel spins up, and you don't get traction. So, Jeff, what have Hyundai done to solve that problem? The geometry in the front end, for one, it's got less um, dive and, and lift, um, but also... Sorry, what's dive and lift? Dive and lift. So when you jump on the brakes is how far the front of the car dives into the ground, and yep. lift is when you accelerate, how much it accelerates out. So you imagine on a push bike, you give it a good push, and wants to lift yep. the front wheel or on motorbikes. So that's lift and dive. So in geometry, suspension geometry and bushing, you can reduce and control those to where you want it to be, getting yep. in the right range, what's acceptable for the purpose of the car. And then if you um, also then look at the LSD, the ELSD on this. So it's designed to, to stop your wheel. To, so if it does have a bit of lift, the LSD can come in and stop it from wanting to... So how does the LSD know that the wheel is going to be spinning? Or... So this has multiple things on it. Um, so the whole car has accelerometers on, on shocks to see how fast they're moving. Yep, yep. G-sensor just in behind this corner here actually, yep. on both front corners and on the rear, so yep. you can see where it's at and what, what forces are going into it. It's looking at uh, wheel speed of all four at the same time, torque of the motor, the acceleration position, the steering angle, the rate of steering you're okay. putting on, and it's got maps in there and saying under these conditions, We've actually tuned so what you're control. saying is that if you're coming out of a corner, it knows that the car is at a high yaw rate, which is rotating yep. like that. It can see that the throttle is increasing, yep. and it thinks, you know what, I'd better do something about that inside wheel before. Yep. Okay, now, is it a purely um, electronic system that applies to brakes individually, or is there a clutch in there as well? What, 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 it what's doesn't between use the brakes at all. For, doesn't for, use the, oh, fantastic. No, so yeah, it's okay. all in an LSD. So what okay. it's got is a, a clutch plate LSD in... Yep off the back of the gearbox. Yep. It's got a hydraulic solenoid motor on the, yep. the side of it and it actually adds fluid pressure onto the plates and if there's a bit of slip, it can actually up the load on the plate. So it's okay. a completely adjustable and varying LSD. Now, how far will it go? Will it go as far as the equivalent of a locked diff? Yes. Wow, it, really? Under full pressure, it's yeah. a lock up. So yeah. you can drive it right in and come back and, yeah. and it's continuously varying on that. Yeah, so I was driving one of these in the wet, and um, my race car is actually a uh, um, Pulsar with a completely locked front diff um, permanently, and it kind of felt a bit the same. It was just that inside wheel was never going to spin up by itself. If it span, the outside wheel was going to spin up as well, which is, um, yeah, kind of idea. That's pretty, pretty yeah, awesome there. I like the fact it doesn't rely on the brake system, because yeah. that will just slow you down and then just start to increase brake wear as well, and put some heat into the system, so it's good that there's a mechanical Clutch, like so you that. don't want to take away to get for the other one. Yeah. You can just give it to both. Yeah. So you, you never want to take power away. Every no, time no. you hit the brake, you're no. taking it away. So why are there two modes then? Why don't you just have a single mode for the ELSD, the, the, the track mode, for even daily driving? Daily driving, you've got shopping centres, car parks, normal roundabouts. You don't want to be too aggressive. So you want a nice, smooth control. You can drive and go get the milk and bread. Yeah. And then if you get to a track, you want to be more assertive on the way you're driving it. So, okay. yeah, you need the modes. Cool. All right. So we've covered the chassis. We've covered um, quite a bit of stuff. What else have we... Is there anything we've missed, Jeff? This is the Kona. One that I, I like to talk about on this one is the suspension, how much grip this has got, how fast this is on track. And people say, how do you make an SUV that fast? Yeah. First thing you do is throw away the whole suspension package from a Kona and you start from scratch, design all the arms, all the components under this car okay. to make it handle. All right, so, so let's just stop. So you might think that suspension is basically your, your um, spring coils in this case and a shock, mm. but you're talking actually the arms here, the geometry and everything else. So it's not just a case of you put some shiny peats in here, everything. you've actually changed the geometry so for that diving Rather spot. than trying to make a Kona go fast, let's build a fast Kona out of the right component straight up. So you're not yeah, just yeah. changing a bush here and an arm there. Let's have complete new knuckles, complete new upright, complete new geometry, steering rack, rack position on the on the uh, 
motor-driven rack as opposed to a column-driven rack. Yep. The whole system doesn't go across from the other car. It is designed to go fast in this height, at this height. It's, it's fantastic. They yeah. didn't try and fix a street car to a race car. They built a race car. Okay. All right. So what else? Uh, anything else that we, we need to talk about from a tech perspective? Here? Tech perspective? Um, throttle response, turbo response, turbo. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the engine. Um, now, in the first Kona's, um, not Kona's, the first i30 N's, um, there was an overboost. But I think in the latest version, the overboost is gone. So what they have is uh, still overboost on them. On the, the new one, it's actually, if you grab an automatic, they have a... Uh, what do they call it? N-grin shift, which is a, yeah, a yeah, button to yeah. give you 20 seconds of extra four, five, six kilowatts. Um, okay. So it takes it to 213. Um, so that's a different method they're doing it. Okay. But what they've done is changed the whole turbo to a bigger turbo, bigger intake, a much bigger exhaust expeller and exhaust manifold and the snail on it, it's all one piece. Yep. And it's reduced back pressure in the turbo, it's increased power of the engine and torque, but it's made it a flat power and torque. So instead of a normal power curve coming up like this, it's actually up here and holds up. So yep. it might be four or five kilowatts more here, it could be 40 or 50 kilowatts down here. It's yep. a, it brings the whole curve up. And yep. the, the technology and the changes that are done on the turbo has transformed the driving on the car. Okay, cool. Now, the steering, there's different steering modes on the car. Yep. That's with the electric steering. Does that just change how hard it is to turn the steering wheel, um, or is there anything else behind that? It's all about the feel and how much feedback you get okay. and how, how firm it is. And that, again, it's all relative to that. It doesn't change ratios, it's not a variable ratio yeah, yeah. rack. It yeah. is just in the, the driver feedback. Okay, so in the sport modes, it allows more feedback. Is that what you're saying? A bit more feedback and a little bit firmer, especially if you're coming to a track, hit a ripple strip. You don't yeah. want a light steer that wants to kick your arm because yep, you've yep. put a wheel in the air. So, okay. it, it so more how, does, how does it allow more feedback? By uh, firming up the ride and, and actually feel what's happening on the road. Otherwise, what you can do is make it a softer in there and, and let it absorb any bumps and, and everything else. So okay. in comfort mode, you want the steering to be soft and pliable and, and you don't feel what you're doing on the road. Drive down the freeway, going to where you're going. Yeah. But then when you get to sporty, you want to have all that feedback come up to you. So it's actually yeah. firming it up, making it a little bit tighter and giving you all the feel. Okay, cool. Mm. Anything else we can cover? On this, I think we've just about covered okay. all the all the, the critical parts on it. Right. Yeah. Great. Well, in that case, um, so Jeff, thanks so much. There's really comprehensive that rundown works. on the Kona, and there you go. That is what makes the Kona, um, or in fact, all N cars, N cars as opposed to normal cars. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to understand that with a hot hatch, you actually do need to do that sort of engineering. Um, you can't just put a more powerful engine in, um, some shiny stickers on it, and call it good. That's going to give you a car which might look good hard parking but it's not going to give you a motorsports car. So now, I hope you found that video useful. Any questions, drop them in the comments, and thanks for watching.